Good day and good holy everyone. We are the group 3 and we are tasked to present what is a short story, its definition, nature, characteristics, elements, example, approaches, and different techniques on teaching a short story. But before that, I will introduce myself first. My name is Pearly Jemen Velasco, second year, taking up PSL major in English and my co-presenters. Good holy guys, my name is Yamba Aisapro and I am taking Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. My name is Lincita Horas. I'm taking a Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. Good holy everyone, I am Novaro Sahonia, Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English second year. Good holy everyone, I'm Erika Eswalo, a second year college student taking up Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. Let me start by giving you an example. So we have here for sale, Baby Shoes Never Worn by Ernest Hemingway, Core Parts Missing, Dr. Bice Yatch by Margaret Atwood. So based on the given examples, we notice that these are all extremely short stories. Now let me tell you what a short story is. It is said that a short story is a brief fictional prose narrative concerned with a single effect conveyed in a single significant episode or scene involving a limited number of characters. At the center of any good story is the truth it reveals. Basically, short stories, it is a work of fiction, so it involves the imagination. Short stories tells one of the events in a concentrated way. It talks about the people who don't really exist. It describes something at a moment of crisis. It has a plot and characters who are somehow connected with each other. Stories provide vicarious experience. That is, uh, they take us places and put us into situations we would never know otherwise. Such experience allows us to lead productive lives, to make more intelligent choices, and to test our sense of values. So short stories will also give us lessons in life where we met ourselves at some characters and imagine life living by those choices and testing our sense of values related to a real life context. Next, we have the nature of a short story. The short story usually concerned with a single effect conveyed in only one or a few significant episodes or scenes. Like what I have mentioned earlier that short story portrays events in a very concentrated way. The form encourages economy of setting, concise narrative, and the omission of a complex plot character is disclosed in action and dramatic encounter but it is seldom fully developed. Pearl Velasco discussed the definition as well as the nature of a short story and now we will going to focus on the characteristic of a short story. So a short story tend to be less complex than novel. Usually a short story focuses on only one incident has a single plot a single setting a limited number of characters and above cover a short period of time a short story has 500 to 15000 words if a short story comes to 50 to 100 pages it is called a novella a novella is a counterpart of a novel it is a short term type of a novel so guys the reason behind why we have a limited number of characters in a short story because we only have a limited scope therefore we only need a significant characters in a short story so don't be confused if you only have less than four characters in a short story because it is one of the characteristic of a short story. So in a longer forms of fiction, stories tend to contain a certain core elements of dramatic structure. So what are those dramatic structure? Well, those are exposition, complication, rising action, crisis, climax, and moral. Because of the length of a short story, may or may not follow this pattern remember 
because of the limited scope of a short story, we could follow or may not follow this dramatic structure. For example, modern short story only occasionally have an exposition. More typically tough is an abrupt beginning with the story starting in the middle of the action or in media stress. In order to catch the attention of the reader, we need to make our writing style differently. Short story has a flat characters, unspecified settings, simple and fast moving plot, ending is clear and usually happy, formulaic language, simple past tense of course, third person narration, round characters, setting may be described in detailed, may not be much background at beginning, ending may be inconclusive, present tense may be used, first person narration. So here are the five elements of short story. Number one is the setting. Setting is tells the reader when and where the story takes place. So it can be a place of residence such as town or city. It can be somewhere large and impersonal like outer space. Uh, examples of that is the Star Wars. So number two is characters. So when we say characters, it is a person or sometimes an animal who take part in the actions of a short story or other literary works. So it shows the descriptions of the personalities of the characters in the story and the way in which an author reveals their personality. So the third one is the plot or the storyline. So it is a pattern of events that develop from the interactions between characters. Or it also refers or what actually happens in the story from the beginning, the middle, and the end. So the fourth one is the theme. When we say theme, it is the central idea, the message or the purpose in a short story. Or what is the features of it that remains in your mind once you stop reading. The last one is style. Style is like a fingerprint. No two are alike. A functions of diction, syntax, and voice style tend to emerge from how you write rather than from a concerted effort to control it. Now, let's talk about the structure of a short story or the plot. In a narrative or creative writing, a plot is the sequence of events that make up a story, whether it's told, written, or sung. The plot is, is the story and more specifically how the story develops, unfolds, and moves in time. Plots are typically made up of five main elements, such as first the exposition, second the rising action, third the climax, fourth the falling action, and fifth is, th is the resolution. So the first main element of a plot is the exposition. Here, the background information establishes the setting and describes the situation. So in the exposition, at the beginning of the story, the characters, setting, and the main conflict are typically introduced. The second main element of a plot is the rising action. Here, the characters face or try to solve a problem. This results in conflicts within themselves or with others. So in rising action, the main character is in crisis and events leading up to facing the conflict begin to unfold the story becomes complicated. The third main element of a plot is the climax. Eventually, the story reaches a crucial moment. The tension that is building reach that is building reaches a peak. And the fourth main element of the plot is the falling action. Here, it's sometimes called the dinoma. This part of the story explores the consequences of the climax. The tension in the story begins to ease. So, in falling action, the story begins to slow down and work towards its end trying up loose ends. Lastly is the resolution. The story's central problem is finally solved, leaving the reader with a sense of completion. So in resolution, also known as the denoma, the resolution is like a conclusion or a concluding paragraph that resolves any remaining issues and ends the story. In addition, plots are also known as storyline, include the most significant events of the story and how the characters and their problems change over time. Example of a short story, and it's entitled Cinderella. The fairy tale of Cinderella has a ref for being a bit retrograde. 
It is a story about a girl whose passivity and meekness in the face of the abuse is rewarded by a very good mother who, ha who hands her over to a man, goes the usual criticism. It's the story of a girl who can't even make it to a party without a magical help. In addition, Cinderella is also known as the Little Glass Sleeper. It is a folk tale about oppression and triumphant reward. Thousands of variants are known throughout the world. The, world. the protagonist is a young woman living in a forsaken circumstances that are suddenly changed to, to a remarkable fortune with her ascension to the throne via marriage. Of here, the plot of the story entitled Cinderella. First, the exposition. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Cinderella. Cinderella lives with her stepsisters and evil stepmother. They make her wear rugs and do all the household chores. Next is the rising action. An invitation to the ball arrives. Cinderella wants to go to the ball, but her stepmother gives her course to keep her away. Fairy good mother helps her to go to the ball. She dances with the prince and falls in love. And for the climax, Cinderella needs to leave the ball in a hurry and leaves one of her glass shoes behind. For the falling action, we have here, the prince begins his search for his mystery girl at the ball using the foot gear test method. The stepsisters try to force their feet into the glass shoe. The resolution. Cinderella tries on tries on the shoe. It fits her perfectly. And the prince finds his one true love. And they live happily ever after. So from the story I've read, you, you will see that plot is arguably the most important element of a story. It is literally the sequence of events. And in that sequence, we learn more about the characters, the setting, and the moral of the story. So, in today's problems with short stories are the understanding the cultural background of the story, the comprehension, the making interpretation, appreciating the style, and the adequate reading strategies. So, in understanding the cultural background of the story, there are students have a problem in understanding while reading. So, even though you are reading, but you didn't know what is really the cultural background of that text, their religious, their ethnic, or the geographical area. So next is comprehension. Students who have poor comprehension in reading, experiencing problem. They experiencing problem in understanding the character, the following the plot, understanding the vocabulary, and understanding the role of the narrator. They are just reading, but they didn't know what is the the main point of this text. What is the narrator trying to point out? What is the what is the role of the character? What is the vocabulary that they use in that text? So if you have a poor comprehension, surely you will experience you will experience it because you are um, uh, slow when it comes to when it comes in learning. So next is making interpretations. Confidence to make own interpretations and coping with ambiguity. So take note, we need to be sure that our interpretation sometimes is really good way to round out your analysis. Okay, next is the appreciating the style. There are students have a problem and it is also one of the students' problems when it comes to the short stories. Um, problem of appreciating the style in short story, they didn't recognize or know if this uh, short story is argumentative, descriptive, persuasive, or narrative style. So when we say style in writing, it can be defined as the way a writer writes or the author techniques. So next is the inadequate reading strategies. So when we say inadequate, it is not enough. So tendency to focus every word rather than general meaning. So um, there are students that um, they are just um, simply focusing on every word but not the general meaning of that text. So how did they learn or how did they know if they are just um, um, focusing on that word? So but not the general meaning of that of that text. So next, why this short story? Respond to text, reading skills, knowledge of text features, responding to characters. In respond to text, I'm reading um short story or teaching short story. You can give or justify your opinions of that um specific topic. Reading skills, making inferences, getting the main idea, predicting events. So through reading, you know um. To make a guess about what you don't know or reading between the line or if you are serious in reading you will just know the main idea of that topic or of that text you are um, getting the main idea and you know where is the events happen knowledge of the text features 
applying knowledge to their writing. So, it helps you to locate important information in a text. You can reflect on your previous learning that you need to use in your writing. Responding to characters, responding to plot, responding to themes, the writing oral performance, so which is the big idea or what the author trying to convey in that short story. Now we have here approaches to teaching a short story. First, we have to understand the features of the text type. Text types may include um, flash fiction, frame story, anecdotes, fables, and other text type features of a short story. Second, we have to understand the features of the genre. It is better for us to understand these features for it enables us to interpret and respond to a text. Third, we have to analyze the text. Analyzing the text by these means of literary elements, it supports understanding of the author's message and purposes. Fourth, we have to decide teaching objectives, for objectives will give the direction for educational purposes and it also informs students the standards and expectation and also the desirable learning experiences. Lastly, we have plan lessons and materials. It will serve as also a guide, a guide being clear on what to teach, being ready for the possible questions, problems, and appropriate materials to be used in teaching and to implement effective learning. Now we have stages in working with the text. It includes pre-reading, building up knowledge of the topic. Second, while reading slash post-reading, it is to understand the details and narrow it down. And lastly, extension activities, integrating and applying better learning and to make it effective. Pre-reading stage. So when we say pre-reading stage, it's a stage where the teacher activates background knowledge, uh, set purposes, introduce key vocabulary, terms, and previews the text with the student. So this involves the teacher giving students information about the books they will be reading. If it is a historical book, give background about what will be happening in the book, why that is happening, and how it came to be. So informing them of the purposes for reading, personal interests, circles, and expectations of teachers, basals, focuses, units. So the first look at the book, cover, any illustration, chapter titles, etc. So the purpose of pre-reading activities are to establish purpose for reading, improve vocabulary so students can complete the reading task successfully, predict what they are going, establish what they know about a topic. While reading and post-reading stage, so it is a stage or group of stages frequently found in lessons that aim of helping students develop receptive skills such as reading and listening. This is the moment where students are actually exposed to the recorded or written text. So when, how, what activities, so when in class it is guided by the teacher. How? Applying reading strategies, activating, inferring, questioning, etc. Um, connecting the story to reader's mind and experience and responding to the writer. Um, you can say something positive about, about his or her writing or you can critique the writing. Next is what activities. Engaging in discussions um, you can use um, a brainstorming activity or a partner activity. Identifying story elements using story organizer like the character, the plot, the setting, the point of view, and the style. And last is the summarizing the event. What is an extension activities? An extension task is further activity around the aims of a class, but after it, often as homework. Extension tasks can provide more or different form of practice. They can also make classrooms learning more meaningful as they give learners a chance to personalize language and content. So when do we give an extension activities? We give extension activities after teaching the story. So to measure the student's um, knowledge regarding the story, after the discussion, the, the teacher must be able to give some activities like this extension activities. Extension activities has three purpose. The first purpose is the integrative use of skills to show interpretation and appreciation. 
So when we say integrated skills, it focuses on the four main English skills, which are the reading, writing, speaking, and listening through a communicative language teaching methodology. So here, students will engage in various activities to practice English, including listening, listening tasks, role-playing, and, st and stimulating discussions. The second purpose of extension activities is the consol consolidating understanding of the story. So when we say consolida consolidation, it is a lesson stage where new material is reviewed and hopefully learning is reinforced. It normally occurs at the end of the lesson. Consol consolidation can be compared with revision, which takes place at a later time and serves to remind learners. The last purpose is applying the language skills learned. Another way to describe language is in terms of the four basic language skills. These are listening, speaking, reading, and writing. In your teaching, you will need to address each of these skills, and whenever, pass and whenever possible, you should utilize activities that integrate, integrate all four skills since, since each reinforces the other. So what are the activities? First, it's all about performing. A performance task is any learning activity or assessment that asks students to perform to demonstrate their knowledge, understanding, and proficiency. Performance tests yield a tangible product and performances that serve as evidence of learning. And an example of this is a reader's theater. The second activity is writing stories. So I will mention several writing activities that students will enjoy. First, you can give them activity about journaling for beginners. And you can also give activities about letting, letting them make cards and letters. Or a, an activity about fill in the story, a drawing words, or a birthday message. And the last activity is the extended task and projects. Here, you can let the student create her or, or his own story. Students will be able to write a creative short story in two to three pages using the following criteria that a teacher will provide. Good holy once again. So, a while ago, we discussed the nature, the environment, and the scope of a short story. Now, we will going to focus on how can we teach a short story in our learners. So, number one is teaching students to understand and respond in character and description. So, we need to relate the characteristic of the character to our learners, which applying the context of reality so that the student could able to realize the good and the bad side of the characteristic in the character number two teaching students to understand and re respond to plot development when we say plot it focuses on the sequence of the story so in order for the student to realize the application of the short story we need to find the significant scene so that we we, I mean the learners, could able to relate it into the reality. For example, the success of the protagonist to defeat the antagonist or the enemy. So, we can say that if if student could able to defeat or to face his difficulties in life, he could he or she could have a successful ending. Successful ending in life. So remember, student could able to face and defeat the problem he or she encountered soon. So number three, understanding and responding to character's point of view. So in a short story, we all know that characters has its own point of view. The good one and the bad one. So we need to tell the student the good as well as the bad so that he could contrast and he can make directions where and when to go. Therefore, student could grow into a positive one knowing the good and the bad side of the story which reality, which we can see in the reality as well. So. Those are the teaching focus or the significant way on how can we teach students that reflects in a short story.
Now we will move on to the strategy or the activity we will use in order to measure the understanding of the student. So we have this completing a charge of the main character's emotion. So we need to know the characters, then make it a charge, then let the student answer the the description or the characteristic of the story so that we could measure if the student relate his or her character to the protagonist or the antagonist of the story and last one we have writing a diary or what or reflection where they can reflect themselves to the main or the antagonist of the story or the whole scene of the story so that he could able to realize the true meaning or the true time of the story and that's all those are the teaching strategy as well as assessment strategy in order for us to measure the understanding of the student if he or she learned when we teach a short story now we are done discussing what is a short story the definition, the nature, the structure, as well as the scope of a short story. And we also discussed the different strategies and activities we will use in a short story. And I hope you learn and understand something. And thank you for listening everyone. Keep safe and good holy.